Hello and welcome to this month's edition of Capital Markets View. I'm delighted that Taryn Wade is back in the chair. How are you, Taryn? I'm good. I'm very happy to be back, Chris. Thank you. And how's how's Cato? How's the family? Um, he's good. He's 11, almost 11 months old. He's okay. home with daddy. Uh, I did nine months maternity leave and uh, my husband's doing three months. We're doing the shared parental, okay. so, which is great. Sleeping well? He made it till about six this morning, <laughs> so we're working on it, okay. but no, he's doing very well. Okay, cool, right. Um, okay, so this is, you know, the last year. Mm -hmm. um, the good thing about this is that lovely grey M&A bits are quite chunky. Um, what surprises me about this graph, and okay, seasonality is back in the market, but the downs, you know, December, January, April, August, really low really low issuance in those downs. Yeah, I mean, I've been catching up on what's happened yeah. over the past year. And I think it seems to me like that low in April was um, quite unusual. I mean, it's a, it was, a, I know that there was a surge of issuance in, in May. Um, I think, you know, you can see that when you look at the supply demand balance and, and how that's, how that's been, how that affected things. But um, I think, I think that was probably a blip. And also, um, lots of stuff coming in September. So it's going to yes. be a good September. Yes, there is a large pipeline. There's a lot of P2P, a lot of M&A transactions. We have things like Merlin Entertainment, yep. Yep. Park Reunidos. Yep. Like things are about to launch. Um, so, the, you know, the pipeline looks relatively Quite a crowded healthy. market in September? Um, yeah, it looks good for September. Uh, and, and here you go. This shows that refi recap chunk. Yes, and what's interesting about this is just looking over the past um, over the past year. Um, I guess in 2018 we had a lot of M&A related supply. It's been much more of a 50/50 split this mm, year. So mm. there's been there has been some some M&A, but there's been a lot of opportunistic transactions as well. And I think that's the question that we've been looking at. Will we continue to see opportunistic transactions into the, going into the fourth quarter? And, and and what do you think? Do you think there are going to be more? Yeah, of them? I mean there there will be. Um, there's a lot of demand. Um, I think you know we're going to talk about CLOs. Yep, yep. Um, there's a lot of demand from CLOs. There's a lot of demand from managed accounts, yep. as we know, um, and then repayments into Ellie. Um, so I think in the fourth quarter, uh, particularly after this current set of deals goes through the pipeline, there's opportunity opportunities to have refinancings, recaps, um, and we have seen sponsors take a lot of dividends out this year. Maybe issuance of recaps hasn't been that high, but if you look at, we did write an article about opportunistic funding that David wrote. And if you look at that data, you can see that actually a lot of cash has been taken out of, of deals this year. And so you know what, if, if our viewers go back and look at things that we said at the beginning of the year, I mean, I remember saying people haven't got much visibility on pipeline, the end of the year might be bad, but actually it might be quite good. Mm -hmm. Opportunistic stuff, and when there are gaps in the market, sorry, M and A stuff, and when there are gaps in the market, it gets filled by the opportunistic exactly. refi kind of stuff. Exactly. Yes. Um, okay. Pricing. Um, so this is a three-month rolling average, mm -hmm. whereas I would have expected this to go down, but it is a rolling average. So it's, and it's you know, gone down. It's gone yeah, down a bit. It's, it's plateauing, sort of, going down a bit. Yeah, and spreads are at uh, 400 basis points over, and this brings us back to this sort of repricing point. Like, will we see repricings? And if you look at the LE data, again, this data is in David's article. i um, looking at you know, sort of how, what percentage of the LE is above 425, 450. Still, it's not a, it's not a huge amount, so um, we might not expect to see that much repricing but unless we see... For, they're right for refinancing. Yeah, if, if we see spreads go down um, a bit further, we might see more. Okay. Um, uh, and CLO volumes, well, people are predicting 30 billion for the year. Um, and this comes into the demand versus supply thing, you know, a yeah. increased demand from the CLO market, you know, ever increasing from the managed account market. So if there is ever going to be an imbalance and if loans are lower than we expect, then there's going to be more pricing pressure, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and actually at the moment, so this again is a rolling average, but you know, AXA um, printed their AAA is I think about 93 basis points. So the arbitrage is working quite nicely at the moment, relatively for CLOs. You and know, that's why we're seeing so AAA, many. Yeah, AAA mm -hmm. pricing down, loan pricing stable a bit down. Underneath the AAAs, the stack is a little bit more challenging, but mm -hmm. you know, the AAA is such a big chunk of that that the arbitrage is, is pretty good. Um, so bonds and loans. Yeah, I mean, uh, we need to mention the ECB yeah. And, yeah. And, and the return to QE, and I think that's 
that's really um, a good thing in terms of bond issuance. I mean, there's been a lot of sort of double B issuance and a lot of demand from investors for uh, for that supply. So um, I guess the challenge will be whether or not um, investors say, stay disciplined um, on the bond side. D double B is a new triple B. You know, people who had a mandate to do investment grade years ago dipping down mm -hmm. into double B because yeah. they needed the yield. Yeah, so the, I think in the fourth quarter it'll be interesting to look at the interplay between loans and bonds and, and how that how that plays out. Okay. Um, and the UK, this is the interesting thing about this graph. So the UK issuance was not great beginning of the year, but mm -hmm. now the UK's really come back despite all the issues that surround the UK. Yeah, there's a lot of UK issuance, not as much sterling denominated issuance. There are a couple of tranches where we're seeing that, but um, the market views that as much more illiquid. Uh, so there's a pricing premium for um, sterling denominated tranches. Uh, is it related to Brexit? Um, it could be coincidental, although the stock markets have been punishing UK corporates. Um, so invest in, um, other companies are looking for deals. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so it, it, it is influencing to a certain extent, but that's another area to watch. Okay, and we're done. So I'm, I'm delighted you're back again. Thank you. Um, and so I can say for the first time in many months, if you have any questions for me or Taryn, please feel free to get in contact. Thank you.